Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. In today's video, I'm gonna rebuild my live preset from scratch on the AxeFX3 using the new Cygnus AMP modeling. I've actually got firmware 16.01 beta dialed up at the moment, which you can grab from the forum if you wanna try it out. I've got my PRS SC245, which is totally stock, except the machine heads. I changed them to locking machine heads because I'm super lazy. Pickups, electronics, everything else. It's just a stock 2008 SC245, but I think it sounds pretty good. And I've got the USA Lead mid gain amp model that I'm gonna use for all the sounds here together with one of my own Cab IRs, LT TV Mix 7. You can grab this one from Axchange for free if you wanna try it. Uh, the preamp tab is wide open here. So let's get straight into it. Anyone who has ever played a real Mark series amp knows that having the bass anywhere past about two or three is a recipe for trouble, but this is what the amp sounds like at the stock settings. And it sounds like that because the tone stack is pre-gain. That's actually modeled in the Axe FX here. You can see it on the preamp tab. So let's do this. I like bass at zero. I like mid down somewhere around one or two. And I like the treble around eight. I like to pull the presence down to about one on this amp model and add a whole bunch of overdrive. The kind of texture of the sound is right now. <laughs> But where's the beef? We get the beef using the output EQ. I like to pump up 80 hertz, pull out a bit of 240, pull out a lot of 750, and just boost 2200 by a little bit. So this is pretty close to the kind of sound I like now. <laughs> This guitar is pretty bassy though. I've got 10 to 52 Ernie balls in drop C on it. So I'm gonna compensate for that by going to the preamp tab and turning the low cut up to about 250, just to remove a bit of mud. We get this. <laughs> That is a lot tighter already. A few extra little tweaks for a bit of extra feel. I like to turn the speaker compression up to about three. And I like using the 4x12 5153 impedance curve. It's just a little bit kind of tighter and sits where I like it. We get this. <laughs> Awesome. Now there is a lot of fizz going on and some kind of unpleasant frequencies that you just get with loud distorted guitars. I'm gonna tame those with a parametric EQ block. I've actually got one that I prepared earlier in my blocks library. I call it Guitar EQ. I might just set the low cut here to about 80. I'll set the high cut to about 6,500. And then I'm surgically removing some of these ice pick frequencies. Have a listen to these. So we're using a really sharp Q, narrow filters to surgically remove these. And let's have a listen to the whole thing now with these high and low cuts in there as well. 6500 might seem extreme, but keep in mind this patch is gonna be played at concert volume. So I kind of got to compensate for that. And I found by experience 6500 is about right for this IR with this amp model. <laughs> The next tone shaping thing I do is to use a multiband compressor. Just tame the chugs a little bit. I've got a whole video about this particular technique. Again, blocks library, tight multiband compressor. I'm just gonna tweak the threshold to 
the point where when I play open, it's not compressing, and when I chug, it is compressing. <laughs> So that's more of a studio technique, but I found works really well live. I do like to add a gate in here as well. I put it between the amp and the cab, but I use a feature here where I side chain it to input number one. So it's really tight, but it's still really kind of organic. And basically the gate detector is listening to my guitar, but it's chopping off all the noise from the amp. <laughs> One of the best gates you can get is a volume knob on your guitar as well and get used to kind of turning that up and down to kill noise. So that is basically the core of my rhythm guitar sound right there. One thing I like to do is add a reverb on this because we use in-ears live just to take the edge off. I like recording Studio C, mix it about 10% and the time at about 0.6 seconds. Uh, nothing else going on there. It's not really that noticeable, but when you're using in-ears, I find it just kind of sweetens everything up. A little bit of pixie dust on there. Alrighty, we need to wire in this preset uh, again using the blocks library here. Use the blocks library on your Axe Effects. It's so, so handy. I'm just gonna go for, for these kind of Jerry Cantrell style wah settings. We get this. And the kind of trick there is to lower the maximum frequency. It's a lot less harsh when you do that. So I've got my wah. The last thing I want, I want a rhythmic delay that I can kick in on one scene and then I want a giant lead delay. I could use one delay block or I could use a multi-tap and a delay. Let's put them in parallel. And when we're routing stuff in parallel, let's put our delay up here. We'll set the mix to 100% and we'll control things with the level. I've already pre-dialed in a dual quarter note dotted eighth note delay here. So this can be my main rhythmic delay, but I need to set the bypass mode to mute effects in. We get this. I like that. I like that a lot for my main rhythmic delay. We'll organize this into scenes in a little bit, and then for a lead delay, mm, do I want the multi-tap? I want the multi-tap, I love the multi-tap. I've got some of my favorite settings dialed in here. Uh, what do I call it? I think just lead delay. Look at all, <laughs> look at all these settings in here, how you meant to find anything. Uh, lead, it looks like it says chode delay, but it's co-delay, chorus and delay. Uh, the first two voices, I'm actually gonna use the quad parallel delay here, so there's no cross feedback. Um, what have I got here? Two really short delays with chorus on them. And then I've got, again, dotted eighth note and quarter note delay there. Uh, the mix I'll set to 100%, bypass mode, mute effects in, and level at about minus six is about right. So this is my lead delay. <laughs> The chorus kind of thickens it up and then the actual delays spread out really nicely. Where's my high cut in here? I might bring my high cut uh, filter slope. I'll set those really quite steep and I'll bring my high cut down to around 4K, kind of like that. And maybe I'll bring the level up to about minus four on that. Let's try that. <laughs> I like that. I think there's some diffusion on there as well, uh, which would be in the tone and mod section. No, no, it's on under more on the multi-tap delay. Bit of diffusion. I like that. So it is just a really, really creamy, thick 
lead delay on there. Let's bypass that on this scene and let's hit save. So this is my main rhythm scene, but on my lead scene, I want a few things. I want more volume. So I'll go to output one and I'll set my scene two where my lead scene is gonna live. I'll have that so it's boosted. And then I want a boost. So I'll use the input boost in the amp block. Let's set that to control switch one. And I want the fat switch in the amp on because it sounds really good with the boogies. Let's set that to control switch number one as well. In the controller section, we'll set uh, the control switch to be on in scene two. I've already done that. Here's one I prepared earlier. So when I switch to scene two, uh, let's actually do this. I'm gonna have to make sure I've got all the right blocks turned on. I don't want the multi comp or the gate, but I do want my multi tap delay on channel A, I do want my reverb on channel A, cab is on channel A, amp is on channel A, input boost and fat are now activated by that control switch and I should have more volume. Magic, cheat codes, that's what I want when I play live. And then scene three, I basically want my main rhythm guitar sound. So all of these are set on channel A and I just want my rhythmic delay on, on channel B, which is where I had it for whatever reason. I'll do this, I'll copy channel B to channel A and I'll set it to channel A so that all my blocks are on channel A here. So I'm not confused. And then I can go through and I can name my scenes. I'll do that in the scene manager. Let's just call this chunk. And we'll call the lead scene lead, very imaginative, I know. And we'll call scene three mm, delay, because it's got a rhythmic delay happening on it. And now I've got my three scenes dialed in. Let's make sure I saved all of those. This looks pretty good. Fantastic. Okay, I've kind of successfully recreated my main live preset, but uh, using some of the nice stuff in Cygnus. I find generally Cygnus is just a little bit kind of raw around the edge. It uh, feels, feels so good, sounds so good. You know, I have a real boogie mark for that. I love playing, but I hardly pull it out at home anymore because this sounds so darn good. I might make a couple of different copies of this preset where I maybe use, instead of the mid gain, I just use the harmonics mode, or I might use the JP2C plus, or you know, another a boogie like a triaxis or something so I can have some options. But uh, honestly, this does it for me. So uh, that's what I do for my sound when I wanna sound like me. If you have any questions or anything like that, let me know in the comments and uh, look, I'll play you all out with some of this glorious lead scene. Thanks so much for watching.